In this episode of The Great American Cruise In, I found a custom restored Model T that's a blend of tradition and technology in a custom built historical driver's car. I'm Scott Huddeman, and I am fascinated with classic cars. That's why I travel from car shows to cruise in to meet owners and learn about their passion for classic cars and the stories behind their amazing restorations. So join me as I go deep into this car show at Gateway Classic Cars to learn more about this incredible Model T restoration. What began as a sketch from a magazine slowly but surely manifested itself into a strategy to undertake one of the most ambitious custom builds of a true classic car, a 1926 Ford Model T. The story behind the restoration of this car is particularly fascinating because it is a classic antique, but mostly because this car represents a ground-up custom fabricated build, meaning that many of the key parts needed to complete the build were hand fabricated. Owner and builder Tony Corral, a veteran of many classic car builds, explains why this car is unique among Model T restorations. Tony, thanks for sharing your car with us today. My first impression of this car when you drove onto the show was, wow, this has got to be a fun car to drive. And here's why I'm so intrigued by this car. Most restorations begin when the builder is able to recover most of the exterior and interior components pretty fairly intact in usable shape and generally in one place, meaning they don't have to hunt down missing parts in garages, barns, or even junkyards. But your Model T project is the exception because this car began with only the body shell. So give me a rundown on what you started with and what you brought to this project to complete this amazingly beautiful restoration. All right, well, it's a 1926 Model T body. It's a real Ford Model T body, not a fiberglass car. Uh, the frame is hand fabricated, the box is hand fabricated, motor is Corvette, transmission is a standard three speed, the rear end is out of an S10 Chevy pickup truck, the front axle is out of a 1937 Ford car, uh, plus a whole bunch of other miscellaneous parts and pieces. But a Model T is generally not a car that you find readily available and in a restorable shape, so your vision and determination certainly played a large role. What inspired you to choose a Model T for your project? Uh, back in the 70s, in uh, one of the old Hot Rod magazines, there was a drawing of a car very similar to this. And I thought, well, it'd be cool to build that car, but I didn't want to build fiberglass. I wanted to build a real steel car. And when I was working, this Woodworth garage, this garage was like walking into a time capsule out of the 1930s and 40s. We had all kinds of old Model Ts, Model As. It was, it was a really neat place. And uh, I asked him, I said, you got any, you know, 26, 27 Model T bodies back there? And he did. He had five trailers full of old Ford parts. And this body, just the body shell, was sitting in the back of a Model T wrecker. Once you had the body shell in hand, what was your game plan to build this car when you had only a few original Model T components? What I ended up doing was I put the body out on the driveway and I... And I took some dimensions off of the motor to get the length, and I put the radiator shell in front, and I kind of moved everything around until I got the silhouette that I wanted and uh, marked it all off on the driveway and uh, took a bunch of measurements and started building it from that. Other than the parts that you fabricated yourself, what were some of the other sources that you used to acquire the remainder of what you needed to build out this car? Well, like I said, there's, you know, there was a lot of junkyard stuff. The motor and transmission is kind of interesting. I'd worked for a Pontiac dealer back in the 80s, and that motor was actually a warranty motor that I brought home like 25 years ago and stuck underneath the workbench. Transmission was the same way. I'd bought a new El Camino, didn't like the three-speed, put a four-speed in it, and that sat underneath the bench. So I figured, well, someday I'd use all this stuff, you know, on something that I would build. So consequently, the motor and the transmission have like no miles on them, and they're from the 80s. You've mentioned custom fabrication, which is often a major part of any restoration, just not at this level. So walk me through some of the custom fabrication that was required to complete this build. Well, the box is nothing more than just sheet steel. And then, you know, with, with what they call our brakes and bead rollers and things like that, you duplicate all the, you know, the box pieces. The tailgate, that's actually a replica tailgate uh, that these cars had. 
Uh, the frame, there again, you kind of follow the design. This body tapers in the front, so this frame is what they call pinched at the cowl. And then it's stepped in the back for the rear axle to get the, to get the lowness of it. Since you didn't have a frame to start the build, how did you approach the design of a new frame that would support a more modern engine and drivetrain that produces significantly more torque than the original Model T engine? Well, the frame is, is all hand fabricated. It's built out of two by three rectangular tubing. So basically you just build you know, what you're gonna build to get your wheelbase and your spacing for your cross members, your steering. I mean, it's all stuff that you have to mathematically figure out. When you brought the body back to your shop, it really was nothing more than just a shell. How did you approach the interior design and fabrication of the seats and the dash components? Were you leaning more towards doing something authentic, or was this going to be more of a modern custom interior? Well, the inside of these cars are very plain when Ford built them. I mean, they had a, a leather covered seat, and they, that was really about it. This particular interior was done by a friend of mine up north in Wisconsin and uh, it's done in a, in a marine vinyl, so it's you know, real weatherproof and all that. Uh, they call it Naga hide. And then he also fabricated the roof for this car. When I built this car originally, it had what they called was a Duval style windshield, which is like a boat style that comes back. Well, we decided to move to Florida. I knew I was gonna need a top, and last minute deal, I mean, literally loading the car in the trailer to bring it home, uh, we, we finished up the top for it. The dash and instrument panel on a typical Model T is pretty simple in its design. So what was your plan for this dashboard and the instruments, and were you able to recover any of the original components that were in any kind of restorable shape? Well, that's all been replaced. Uh, Henry Ford had a very, very simple dash in these cars. You know, this was way before fuel gauges and water temperature gauges and speedometers and all that stuff. They had a couple switches and, and that was about the extent of it. These are all Stuart order gauges. There's a speedometer, uh, oil pressure gauge, water pressure gauge, uh, amp meter, and a fuel gauge. It looks like you've also rebuilt the steering column and the shifter. Are these new as well? Yeah, the steering column is nothing more than a piece of rod and then there's a piece of tubing over it that actually makes up the, what they call a mass jacket that mounts it to the, to the dash. And that, again, that was all hand fabricated just out of you know, round stock and, and round tubing. You've clearly made a substantial investment in both time and money in the restoration of this car. And Tony, I can't help but think that the challenge had to be irresistible to a builder of your experience. So as you step back and look at this amazing accomplishment right here in front of us, what does this car mean to you? It means more to me than something you just go out and buy. You know, I mean, you buy somebody else's car. You know, this thing here, I built it. You know, all, of, all the cut fingers and smashed thumbs and cussing and swearing, I mean, that's all me, you know. So it wasn't like, you know, this is a whole new adventure that you've never done before. Uh, this is all just basically a repeat of a lot of other stuff that I've, that I've done through the years, with the exception of I never built a whole car entirely from scratch, from a pile of parts. That would be the only difference. Do you find there's more joy in the build, or is it in the enjoyment of the finished restoration? Equal. Yeah, just as much fun to build it and drive it. It's, it's equally the same. For the viewer who's watching this show, what advice can you offer someone who's interested in taking on a build of this magnitude? I mean, you have to have the knowledge, you have to have the tools, you have to have the facility. Uh, you have to have a lot of patience. You don't put these together overnight. I mean, these cars typically take three, four years to build, and I'm not saying you're out there, you know, one Saturday a week. You're out there a lot. So you got to have a lot of dedication. It really helps to have a good circle of friends, you know, that you can rely on, that, you know, can help you with some of the stuff that you're maybe not, you know, just so comfortable with. There's a lot to building the car. Uh, I would say if you're a novice and you just want to enjoy the hobby, try to find as nice a car that you can afford, buy that and improve on it. Because the builder from scratch, there's not a whole lot of people that have that ability to do that anymore. There's way more to it than what it looks like. From sketch to beautiful show car, 
The story of this Model T restoration can be an inspiration to anyone looking to take on a challenge of this magnitude. The end result of this project is truly amazing and has been attracting a serious amount of attention at the Classic Car Cruise Inn. If you enjoyed this show and don't want to miss the next new episode, then click on the subscribe button in the description below and I'll send you an email with a link to each new show as it's posted. This is the easiest and best way to hear the stories behind these amazing cars. You can also check out this car and more on our YouTube channel and on our Instagram page where we post the best of the best from car shows and cruise-ins. Just follow the links to these channels on our website at greatamericancruisein.com. And if you have a car that you want to show off, then send us an email with pictures and all the details so that we can show it off on our website. See the footer section of the homepage for more information. I want to thank you for spending your time with me, and I look forward to bringing you another amazing classic car story on the Great American Cruise Inn.